friction. Friction is anything in your business or life that slows you down, that catches on things, that snags, and that makes things not work smoothly. Friction. Look for friction. Use the word to describe it. When you're going through life, it's almost like you've got those little Velcro things on and you're running things and going and it's just catching. So work on streamlining all processes. Try to remove as much friction as you can proactively. There's a great scene in the movie The Aviator with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. He played Howard Hughes, who was one of the most eccentric people that's probably ever lived, was the richest guy in the world for a while, very successful, very, very weird, brilliant, intelligent, creative individual. And he would fly all of the test planes because he wanted to be the one to break the speed barrier and to just get out there. And there was a scene in the movie that, well, it'll always be in my mind, it really made an impression on me. And they were streamlining the planes and making them more, more powerful and more streamlined and more aerodynamic. And there was one scene where he came walking out, and they had this beautiful, uh, like, brushed aluminum or chrome plane, and it was all shiny. And he was walking along the wing, and the little rivets in the wing were sticking up, like this much, and he's running his hand over them. And he said, now we gotta get rid of these. And his engineers were like, you know, come on, you know, what are you talking about? Look at how, and he's like, no, no, we gotta get rid of these. And then they went back to work on it, and then it flashes to the next scene, and his hand's running over this smooth edge of the wing, and the rivets are gone, and then he's up in the plane breaking the speed limit. And he was aware of something, right? He got something that other people didn't get, that nobody else could see. That even though it's air, and even though those rivets are that small, that they're still catching, they're still holding him back. And that he could even take that powerful plane that was probably the fastest plane in the world at the time or whatever and streamline it even more by smoothing it off completely. So where can you do that? Where can you streamline in your own life? Where can you streamline in your business? Let me give you a couple of quick techniques. Here are some ways to remove friction. Now that we've got the mindset. Counterintuitive again. There was a great book called Stop Setting Goals If You'd Rather Solve Problems, written by a guy named Bob Beale. And in this book, he said something that I thought was profound. He said, most people don't like setting goals. Just at a gut level, it just doesn't appeal to them. And he said that something like 80% of people are what he called problem solvers. They prefer solving problems to setting goals. Watch this. Just write that down and then watch this. Who here would prefer to solve problems rather than set goals? Raise your hand. Serious, raise your hand. Okay. Look at how many people that is. That's most of the people in the room. Here, and this is entrepreneurs who tend to skew toward more goal-oriented people. So one of the things that I've discovered is that when you're working with a team of people, if you want to remove some friction up front, Instead of sitting down with them and saying, okay, group, let's set a goal. What's the goal? Sit down and say to everybody, what are some of the problems we need to solve right now? To your group. Start with, what are some of the problems that we need to solve right now? Many entrepreneurs are very frustrated that their teams argue with everything. Oh, we can't do that. Oh, that won't work. Oh, that's too stressful. Ah, oh, uh. Not obvious, counterintuitive. Sit down with your team. I recommend that you do this. This is one that you could implement right now. You could write an email at the break that says, hey, you know what, we've got this uh, project coming up or we've, we've all been working on this project. What are some of the problems that you see with it? What are some of the problems we're gonna need to solve? And just see what your team comes up with. And you don't have to buy into all of them or say, oh gosh, these are really big problems. And by the way, when your team is saying, we have a lot of problems here and problems we need to solve, they're not being negative. That's not what they're trying to do. They're trying to get to the objective. They're trying to fix things and make it better. 
So if you start with, what are some of the problems we need to solve? You preempt it. And guess what? You fulfill their needs first. Another way to remove friction, this is something that Ralph taught me. I've mentioned Ralph a lot. Be careful when you're brainstorming around your team. A brainstorm from you sounds like an order to them. It sounds like a mandate. It sounds like something that they should be doing. So be very careful. And when you're brainstorming, say, you know what? I'm going to brainstorm right now. Let's not do any of the things I'm about to say. And you got to keep saying it over and over. Let's brainstorm right now. You know what? I got a couple of ideas on the way over here. Let's brainstorm a little bit. Let's not do any of these things. I just want to talk about them. What are some of the problems you see? Hmm. Another one is to share your thinking process. This is super ultra mega counterintuitive. If you have uh, been thinking about an idea or a project you want to work on or you've been setting a goal doing your entrepreneurial thing and you've been working on it and calculating it in your head and then you sit down with your team and you say, okay, here's what we're going to do. I've made all the decisions. I laid the whole plan out. I figured it all out. Now just go do this. That's not something that empowers other people. That's not something that people get excited about. They go, yeah, yeah, that's what I want to do. Why? They weren't involved. They didn't get to help. It wasn't their idea. And one of the things that I've discovered is very powerful is to sit down and say, so I've got this idea. You know, it's kind of a brainstorm. And I'd love to get your advice, your insight, see what you think about it, see if there are any problems with it, see what you see. And then take them through the process of how I figured this idea out, where I got the idea from, what triggered it, what data I used to make the decision, how I did this other one, then I called up a friend of mine, and I got some advice from them, and here's how I built the case, here's my whole decision-making process, and then I arrived at this, and then I think that if we do these four steps, we could get to that. What do you think? There's my whole case. I've laid my thinking, my reasoning, my model. It's all right here. What do you think of that? Now, that can be very engaging with other people. Why? For one, just simply, it's that you're trusting them and you're being open. You're not hiding anything. You're not trying to control other people by saying, I'm the leader and I'm the boss and so you should do what I tell you. So tell other people your thinking process. Teach them how you're thinking about things and do it on a regular basis. Explain it quickly. Not letting go. Huge friction. Not letting go. I've heard this phrase a bunch of times. It's a cute little saying. What you stick with, you get stuck with. Something I've found very useful in my life is to, on a regular basis, try to let go of everything. Not get attached to anything. Not get too attached to a process, a meeting, a car, anything in my home, anything. Just try to not be too attached to anything. Why? Because if I'm attached to something, there's no space for something else that could be better. If I'm not really attached, but I'm just trying to be a good shepherd of the things that are around me, I can be open. I was uh, at a friend's house uh, who's in this room who will go nameless, and we went over there, and we were in the middle of doing a bunch of things, and we were kind of going between stuff, and it was a pretty busy day, and he ran into his laundry room, and he was changing his laundry, and uh, I said, what are you doing? He said, oh, I'm just getting my laundry done in here, and I said, he's got this big, beautiful house, and I said, you know, not to be a pain in the ass, but... Why are you doing your law? I mean, you're busy. Look, you got all this stuff going on. And uh, he was like, come on, you know, what are you talking about? Of course I do my own laundry, you know. It just would only make sense. It only takes a minute. I don't know. Does it only take a minute? When, uh, when I talk to people, entrepreneurs who are trying to get to the next level, one of the questions that I ask, especially if they've achieved some level of success, is do you do your own laundry? Do you do your own shopping? Do you wash your own car? Are you doing all that stuff? 
Yes, why? If they say, well, I'm a gourmet chef, and it's really, it's really enjoyable. My wife and I, we go down to the market, and we pick out the vegetables ourselves, and we talk about the dishes that we're going to create, and then we go home, and we cook together, and we enjoy what we do. I say, good, stick with that. If they say, oh, you know what, that's just my, you know, that's my work ethic. I, I couldn't just have somebody else do that kind of stuff. Mmm, holding on to those things instead of letting them go. If you hear me say this right now and you're doing anything, if you've got cash flow and your bills are paid and you're doing anything that's worth less than 50 or $100 an hour, you're robbing yourself. And worse, you're robbing your team and you're robbing your business. Because rather than spending an hour doing your laundry and going shopping that day, I'd rather if you spent the hour unplugged, relaxing, sitting out by the pool, going to a museum, spending time with a friend laughing and having a good time. You will be so much better for it. 